Let's talk about Kadena and let's talk about why Kadena's hybrid solution to scaling blockchains is most likely going to revolutionize the space. The clip I'm about to play was from the 2019 Business for Blockchain MIT conference. In this clip, MIT professor Simon Whitehouse is going to explain why businesses, universities, and institutions most likely are going to want to utilize or leverage the technology that you get from having a public and private blockchain in one because you'll be able to do things like have customer support on your private side that you just can't have on a public side. You're also gonna be able to keep things confidential and private, which you can't just do on a public blockchain. And one of the things that gives Kadena the major upper hand is the fact that they also have a private permissionless blockchain and they also have a public open source blockchain. So businesses will be able to utilize the technologies together, having a private and public blockchain that were designed to communicate to make each other better from the start. Kuru was never a layer two that was added to scale Kadena. Kuru was a layer two that was designed to make Kadena better. Ready? Let's dive deep. So let's get started. Um, I was taking copious notes while you guys were talking, um, and there are clearly, clearly some, some serious themes. First of all, this hybrid idea that really it's not about permissioned or permissionless, but we're actually combining the two. Things are moving back and forth. Simon, you raised this at the end of your conversation. Do you have anything to add about that? And how do you think that our audience should be thinking about that? I think it's a, it's a great topic. Uh, to be honest, I'd love to learn more about some of the things you're doing. Um, uh, I think those five requirements that I put on one, one of my early slides are, are the key tests that I end up applying as to whether or not it's, it's workable. So, you know, can I predict what it's going to cost? Can I predict what service levels I'm going to get? Do I have somebody to call when it goes wrong? Do I have a reasonable degree of com confidence that data is properly segregated where it needs to be? Not always, but where it needs to be. Those five tests are the key tests. And as I'm, I'm sure you'd bear me out, that there's this, it's, a lot of this starts to get quite specific to the specific applications. Um, but conceptually, it's a, it's a fabulous idea. It's a fabulous idea. Yeah, and Monica, so, so you're really, what you guys are building is very much in this hybrid model. Uh, Simon just pointed out sort of some of the concerns that enterprise has. Are you finding that it is difficult to satisfy those concerns when you are building in a very hybrid way, public, private, or are you coming up with, you know, as you're building these things, are you coming up with ways to address this? The benefit of the hybrid model is that you can partition your application so that the parts of it that you're most concerned about in terms of data privacy and being able to, to know that your transaction times are going to be what you need them to be, you can do that on your private blockchain side. Mm. And then when you want to go out and sell something or tokenize something or create a public attestation of like, yes, this happened, I'm raising a semaphore, all of those are, you can be slightly less concerned about your SLAs, for example. Although we do make certain promises about transaction times in chain web and the kind of transaction volume that we can do. But if you're really worried about, you know, this needs microsecond times and I need to know that, it's, that the data is replicating, that's a perfect case for having it on a permission blockchain. Now this next part here is the really exciting part. When we talk about the value proposition that Kadena potentially could present to competitors on a global scale, not just talking about your average retail investor, or your average banker that might leverage this technology to make their business more efficient. A government is a business. They have budgets that they're always over, right? How much money does the government waste on paper? How much do they waste on filing, storage, server space? All of these incentives that they are going to get if they choose to interact with blockchain and a blockchain that can scale and help their business save money. So when you think about big picture, what blockchain was literally designed for enterprise grade businesses. <laughs> Is that what's happening or are we really getting productive work out of these consortia? Do you want me to go first? All right, so we, we have a conflicting relationship with consortia because on the one hand, they show a lot of promise but they also require people who have been competing against each other. When I say people, I mean corporations mm -hmm. that have been competing against each other for sometimes decades, if not hundreds of years, some of these companies. And so there's a, a strong disinclination to play nice with each other, even though it's often something that they all want. So we did a pilot for a consortium of healthcare companies, healthcare insurers, where they wanted to share doctor's office information. This isn't even HIPAA protected data. This is just 
Insurance companies get fined if they don't know where their doctors are and who's taking what insurance and how many employees they have and all of this information. And right now, they each individually try to maintain this information and they have these call centers that call the doctors and doctors hate it and the insurance companies hate it. And it was a perfect case for if everybody could just play nice and share their information, everybody could win. And it was a successful pilot in that it did work and we got five companies to stand up and use it. And then when it went forward into who's gonna maintain this, it, we're still on hold. Mm -hmm. So th they have a lot of promise, but it's hard to get people to play nice. I'm not sure if you've seen yeah, that. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And in fact, on that, uh, if you remember this, this sort of solution shape slide I had at the end of my spiel, uh, the middle category exactly falls into that space quite commonly. And I, I think it's worth stepping back a click and saying, um, the, the power source for change is value, and ultimately value to the end user, not value to the corporation as an objective and landing point. That's an interim state. We can debate whether or not it happens fast enough, that chain, but ultimately, the, I think that's a really fundamental point that says, I if a group of people are working together, why would we do it? Um, and we do it because we're frightened, maybe, but hopefully we do it because we can see a grander vision that says, wow, look, there's, there's new innovation, there's new product service, there's new opportunity here, uh, as well as uh, more mundane stuff, like there's a lot of efficiency gains, quite often your point about you know, just admin. And frankly, uh, uh, look at the way we've automated so many processes in this world. I, mean, I, was, I was telling a story to a friend the other night, it's if you could do a sort of spaceman in a, in a satellite whizzing around the planet, just looking down on planet Earth, uh, you'd, you'd, you'd be forced to think we must be crazy. I mean, we've, we've just kind of automated in these vertical silos. And then we message between silos. We don't even do a very good job of automating within a silo. Um, so there's a huge amount of intrinsic value, I think, in society at large for being more coherent in the way we use data. But then it starts to then click down into a consortium that says, OK, so if we're four of us are going to form a business, you know, is are going to absolutely clean up and the three of us are going to end up being stuffed? Because uh, guess what? That consortium probably won't work. <laughs> You're um, very untrustworthy. So <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it will. Actually. <laughs> but but my, my point is that, and, and I, I find myself in this conversation almost daily, I'd say right now, it is um, once leaders in, in business or enterprise and government have reached a point of maturity where they understand what the technology might enable, and that's not a trivial step, by the way, and we're in a very asymmetrical landscape there. But, but once you get to that point, then you can get to the point where you say, okay, well, what is the value, it, what is the value that we're talking about across the pool, and how is it, how is it uh, distributed? You know, is it asymmetrically distributed? Because it usually is. In which case, how much do we care? Because we may not care, and it's worth having that conversation very early on. You know, I'm, not, I'm never going to let you win. So, well, let's all go home then. You know, and by the way, some other group, I mean, your sector, may well work it out. So I, I think, I think the, 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 the word incentive is a very interesting one that you coined because it's one I see over and over again right now. And it's worth us leading the conversations very quickly with what's the value story, how's it distributed across the group, and how we're incentivized to change. And these are things that you don't just get from a blockchain like Solana, where a couple buddies that maybe don't have massive experience in banking, don't have massive experience working for governments like the SEC. We see Monica. She used to work, she used to be a quantitative analysis at the SEC with Will Martino. And then now you see people like the director of MIT and these big players on a global scale really starting to go, wow. When you start, when the smart minds start thinking about how you can leverage a technology like that, you start attracting all of the smarter minds. And all of these smarter minds are like, wow, this technology is gonna revolutionize the world. How can we help? And what you're gonna see is you're gonna start to see the Kadena blockchain starting to attract really, really big legacy players from the medical sector, the healthcare sector, governments, the SEC, Wall Street, right? The type of trading algorithms that they're gonna be able to build with a blockchain that's this powerful, especially a public and a permissionless blockchain that can utilize and communicate together using different types of NFTs because their Marmalade NFT standard is gonna revolutionize the world. I'm telling you guys, I could talk this up all day, but until you guys start diving in and doing the research yourself, you're not gonna see the things that I'm seeing and you're gonna overlook it and most likely miss out on one of the greatest opportunities in the history of crypto. Love you guys.